Welcome back to official Hyperspin tutorials with the AV Archivist. Last time, we learned how to choose emulators and add them to Rocket Launcher. Today, in the next step of the setup process, we'll be learning about Hyperspin system databases and how to keep them up to date. When we left off, I'd just finished the initial emulator setup in Rocket Launcher UI for the Nintendo Entertainment System, so I'll pick up the example from there. The time has almost come to add our ROMs to the mix, but there's one more important step we need to take first. Let's now go to the Games tab, and in the System Audit sub-tab we'll click List All Games in this system database. As you can see, the list below populates to include pretty much every NES game ever made. If we open Hyperspin and browse to the Nintendo Entertainment System's wheel, we'll find the same. Now, from what information are these lists generated? Before we answer that, let's take a moment to ensure we're running effective editor software, which will be an important tool throughout our time with Hyperspin. If you haven't yet, install Notepad++ now, the link to which I've once again provided in the description. To set it as your default editor in Rocket Launcher UI, browse to the Global Rocket Launcher UI Settings tab, where we'll find a parameter called Module Editor Pad. Click its magnifying lens and browse to your Notepad++ executable. With that out of the way, open Windows Explorer and browse to your Hyperspin installation directory, within which we'll find a folder called Databases. Inside that, we'll see a separate folder for every system currently in our setup, as well as one for the main menu, which we'll be discussing in another time. Each of these folders contains a basic system database that was included with a Hyperspin installation package. Let's check out the NES database now. Go into the Nintendo Entertainment System folder and right-click the XML file. Go to Open With and choose Default Program. Select Notepad++ and toggle Always use the selected program to open this kind of file. What we're looking at now is a typical system database, the very fiber of that which makes Hyperspin tick. At the top, we see the proper system name, followed by the date when this particular database was published and its version number. After that, we find an entry for every game that appears in the Rocket Launcher UI and Hyperspin game lists for this system. The description parameter is what you'll see in Hyperspin in the bottom left corner when you've stopped on a game in the wheel. This is also where the manufacturer and year information is displayed. The other parameters we'll cover at various points in the official tutorial series, but it's important to realize that pretty much all of this information is manually researched and entered by hand. It is a challenging undertaking, and the official Hyperspin database crew works hard to keep tens of thousands of game entries across, at present, almost 200 systems up to date. As such, please treat them well. They are the unsung heroes of Hyperspin, working behind the scenes to ensure we all have reliable data from which to generate new media and to run our games. If you ever find a typo in a database, or feel there are games missing from it, please report it in the Hyperspin forums. Generally speaking, databases include all games playable in the English language, including functional homebrews, prototypes, fan translations, and non-English games that can still be enjoyed without understanding their native language. If a game is known by different names in different regions, preference is typically given to the name used in the westernmost of those regions. As you can see, this particular database was published quite a long time ago, and it probably needs to be updated. Let's close Notepad++ and do that now. In the description below, you'll find a link to Hyperlist, Hyperspin's database repository, and general bastion of gaming knowledge. Scroll down to the Nintendo Entertainment System. Hyperlist tells us the number of games in the current database, which is almost 100 more than in the database we have in our setup now. This further illustrates the importance of keeping your databases up to date. We can also see the database version, the date the file was last modified, and the last person to control it. Click on the XML icon to the right to download the database, replacing your existing one. If you've manually modified your database in any way, you might want to consider making a backup first. Also, the system database should always be named to exactly match the name Hyperlist uses for that system, or else we end up making a lot more work for ourselves later. If we go back to Rocket Launcher UI and relist the system games, we'll see that it updates to reflect our freshly updated database. That's really all there is to it. You now know how to effectively update a system database. This is easily one of the most important steps in the setup process. Even after your setup's complete, it's worth checking Hyperlist from time to time to see if there are any new updates. In the next episode, I'll be showing you how to audit your ROMs and rename them to match the system database prior to adding them to Rocket Launcher. Thanks for stopping by, and have a great day.